What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi Shrinks and Sneakers.com. So in this video, I'm going to talk about a topic that many people have asked about, many people have commented on other videos about, and that is weight gain associated with psychiatric medications. And today what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm gonna tell you about this new medication. This is pretty exciting stuff because it may finally be that we have a medication that may help prevent some of this weight gain associated with these medications that we could start earlier on in the treatment. And that medication is called semaglutide. And you may have never heard of semaglutide because, it, unless you have diabetes, because it's normally a medication that's um, used to treat diabetes. But it's recently gained approval as a potential weight loss drug. So we're gonna talk about this wonder drug to prevent antipsychotic induced weight gain, and I'm gonna tell you all about it here. So just a little bit of context first before we pop into this discussion about semaglutide specifically. So most people want to be thin and fit. I mean, it's a natural thing, right? You wanna be thin, you wanna be fit. But when we actually look at the statistics here in the United States, what we see is that more than 42% of Americans are obese and another 30% are overweight, according to the CDC. That significant percentage of the population, 42% of Americans have obesity or, or, or could be clinically characterized as having obesity and 30% are overweight. So that's a significant, that's more than half the population, right? So significant. Excess body weight can play a role in disease too. One of the things we know is that both physical and mental health is impacted by obesity. And I've talked about it in previous videos, I've said, that obesity can lead to things like inflammation, and inflammation may also be partially responsible for some of the mental health concerns that people have. Now, obesity, of course, can cause type 2 diabetes. It can contribute to cardiovascular disease and hypertension. Excess adipose tissue can also increase systemic inflammation and inflammatory biomarkers linked with depression. So that would be things like interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha, etc. And this is all without the addition of any psychiatric medication. So this is just in general. These are not, I'm not talking about patients who have psychiatric disorders. I'm talking about people in general. So then you add in these medications that are known to cause weight gain. And obviously that's going to cause a significant problem as well. So psychiatrists, as a psychiatrist, one of the things we need to get good at is the treatment and management of obesity. It's very, very important and very common in the population of patients that we see. Things like metformin, which I've talked about in previous videos, as well as the use of things like stimulants and adding naltrexone to, the, to Welbutrin can be helpful, but have yet to really significantly impact the risk of weight gain with some of these medications. So all of the stuff I said is all true and it's all problematic, but all of that may change now when the FDA approved semaglutide on June 4th, 2021. Now, semaglutide is a glucagon-like peptide receptor agonist. So that's a lot to say, that's a lot to remember, and you don't really need to know all the details, but glucagon-like peptide receptor agonist, GLP-1, and it was previously used in the treatment of diabetes and is now available as an option for weight loss in obese patients, right? Obese patients or those with a BMI greater than 27 if they also have a weight-related comorbidity, diabetes, hypertension, etc. There is a pill version of semaglutide available, so there's a PO form that you can take by mouth, and that comes in seven milligrams or 14 milligram tablets. But there's also the one that really I think most that has been most studied with the psychiatric medications is going to be the subcutaneous version of the medication that's administered weekly. Now the big drawback to this subcutaneous medication that's administered weekly is that it costs a ton of money and most patients can't afford it. So especially in a population like I see in community mental health, the people who need this medication the most are the last to get it because the cost is so high. And you might be saying, Dr. Rossi, what's the cost of this semaglutide? Well, what I can tell you is it costs about $1,400 a month, $1,400 a month. And then your next question might be, well, for $1,400, Dr. Rossi, what am I going to get? And that's an excellent question. So we're going to look at this trial that was called the step one trial. And this looked at the subcutaneous version of the medication, and it was associated with an average of 14.9% weight loss. And that translates to 15.3 kilograms 
over a 68 week period of the study. So that's pretty significant. I mean, people people lost an average of, you know, 15% um, and they also lost 15.3 kilograms over 68 weeks. So it's not bad. I mean, your $1,400 is buying you something here and it, it is it is preventing some of these problems and long-term complications, obviously, of poor weight management. And this is significantly more weight loss than other medications on the market currently. So I had mentioned that stimulants sometimes are, are used. Um, some people use bupropion and naltrexone, but none of these are as effective or as significant as the results that came out of this trial for semaglutide. Important things to know about glucagon-like peptide, one agonist, are they work on the brain in many different ways, okay? So the, ways that, the way that this medication works is that it works on the brain to decrease appetite, to slow gastric emptying, to increase insulin secretion, and to stimulate brown adipose tissue thermogenesis. So there's multiple mechanisms by which GLP-1 agonists are able to cause weight loss, and again, appetite suppression, slower gastric emptying, increased insulin re release, and to stimulate the brown adipose tissue for th thermogenesis. And thermogenesis, obviously, the hotter things get, the more energy or calories are burned. So semaglutide can be administered weekly as a subcutaneous injection, the same way somebody would administer their insulin. It's uh, administered by the patient, so you can do it yourself at home. And the problem, one of the other problems I want to point out, though, is not only is it a high cost, it's also not covered by Medicare or Medicaid at this point. Although, again, I'm a big believer that the people who need these medications the most should have access to them, and they often are people who are in government insurance programs like Medicare and Medicaid. So to sum it all up, this may be a game changer for us in psychiatry. It may offer another opportunity for patients who are significantly prone to weight gain, and to get out in front of this issue before it becomes a major problem. Like I said, everybody wants to be thin and fit, so we might as well give people the best opportunity to do so. Obesity still remains a highly stigmatized condition. Being a, Nobody likes being obese, nobody likes talking about obesity, nobody likes talking about the management of obesity, but we definitely as psychiatrists need to do more of it. So we have to do more of it. And it can't be hidden, right? Obesity can't be hidden. It's something that's obvious when, when a patient walks into the room and is morbidly obese and also leads to significant comorbid illness, specifically things like type 2 diabetes and heart disease. The problem is the medication needs to become available to the patients that need it the most and who can't afford it. And at a hefty price of $1,400 a month, my fear is that most people are not going to have access to it. I'm going to hold the video there. If you guys have questions about GLP-1 agonists and how they work, or you want to talk more about the cost or anything really, drop them in the comment section below. And please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me to keep making these videos for you.